from St. Paul's Baptist Church. Here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul's South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number 1 when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Name dropping is the practice of casually mentioning the names of famous people you know or claim to know in order to impress others or raise your own status through association. As people of faith, we should be name droppers, dropping the name not of celebrities, but of our creator. God elevates our status and God has an impressive resume. Isn't it time for you to drop a name? Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, for this exciting series as he encourages us to become name droppers. If you're anywhere near Richmond, September 10th and 11th, we want to invite you to join us in person for our annual homecoming celebration. We are family. On Saturday, September 10th, all roads lead to our South Campus at 700 Belt Boulevard, where we'll worship together at 11 a.m and then share in fun, food and fellowship and festivities immediately after in our homecoming Rock the Block party. Then on Sunday, September 11th, we're all meeting at our North Campus, 4247 Creighton Road, where we'll worship together at 9 a.m. and then share in fun, food, fellowship and festivities immediately after in our homecoming Sunday Fun Day celebration. Visit our website, myspbc.org, for all the details. Don't miss it. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop.
Praise the Lord. Good morning, St. Paul everywhere. You know, recently, Pastor started this series called Name Dropping the Name or Name Droppers. I want to drop a name about God today. It's Jehovah Rapha, which means God heal us. And so we're so grateful to God that he takes care of us. I am grateful to God for what he is doing in my life, my life, my family's life in healing. And so one of the scriptures that I saw was from Hosea, the sixth chapter, first verse, which says that come back to the Lord. He has hurt us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage our wounds. God will take care of us. Believe me. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you and give you praise and glory and honor, Lord God, for being Jehovah Rapha. We thank you, oh Lord God, that you come and you heal, Lord God. You take care of us in our time of need. And so today, Lord God, we bless your name for being a healer, Lord God, for all of those who have experienced an opportunity for you to heal them. And so, God, we thank you and ask you to bless us in our service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm Dr. Maceo Freeman, the Life Stage Pastor for the Fabulous Prime Time life stage where we are living our lives like it is golden and we appreciate you being here and we want to welcome you in the name of our pastor dr lance watson our first lady rose watson our entire leadership of our church and today we're going to have a great great worship service because we're trying to lift up the name of jesus christ through all generations and if you're here for the very first time we appreciate you because of all the places and spaces you could have been God led you here. And so right now, if you don't mind, if you would text the word NEW to 804-643-4769, God bless you. We appreciate it. We'll get back with you. Amen. For those of you who have been online and following us all along, we welcome you back as well. God bless you as well. We thank God for you for following along with us and being with us all the way through our pandemic. And so we just ask that if there's some I met something in the message, the music, or some moment during the service that inspires you, put it in the chat space. And those of you who are chatting, if you don't mind, go ahead and use your life stage colors and encourage others. If you see somebody above you, shout out to them in the chat space. Somebody below you, shout out to them as well. We'd love for you to use all of the different emojis to celebrate as we worship together, because that's a part of what we want to do. We want to worship with you and not for you. So God bless you. And let's have a wonderful worship service today. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, oh, heaven sent, heaven 
sets me up Very wonderful Very wonderful Supernatural Supernatural Special friend Special friend When I call him He answers prayer And when I need him He is right there
don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. God is able. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to this worship celebration. It is a joy to share with you wherever you are in the world. We are grateful for your sharing this time with us. And there is a word from the Lord. If you have your scriptures, travel with me now to the textual territory that is Genesis chapter 17. I'd like to read in your hearing just two verses of scripture, verses one and two. We're in a series of messages called, I'm a name dropper. And today we're gonna drop another name that we discover that the ancient Hebrews use for God. And that name is El Shaddai. And we want to subtitle this message, More Than Enough. Listen for a word from God. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. Back in the late 1960s, there was a popular television Western series called The Guns of Will Sonnet. Walter Brennan played the title role, a scripture quoting man with a reputation for unparalleled gunfighting skills. As the series progressed, viewers saw the wise old man avoid more gunfights than he got into because of a simple statement about his abilities that was made by others. And this is what they said, no brag, just fact. In the scriptures, my friend, God is called almighty because God is the only one worthy of all our affection, attention, and adoration. No brag, just fact. God is almighty, or in terms of our teaching title today, El Shaddai. Everybody everywhere say it out loud, El Shaddai. El Shaddai is a powerful compound name comprised of two parts, El meaning God and Shaddai meaning almighty, sufficient, or more than enough. The name El Shaddai appears seven times in the Old Testament, yet God is also referenced solely as Shaddai another 41 times. And our introduction to this name arrives in Genesis 17, when Abram received a visit from the Lord. In the context of a covenant, Abram calls God El Shaddai. This is significant because you should know a covenant is a formal, official, binding agreement. Did you hear me? As Christ followers, we have a covenant. We celebrate our covenant through Christ on a monthly basis through the service of communion, a.k.a. the Lord's Supper. Christ instituted our covenant before being crucified on the cross with the fateful words, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Through this new covenant inaugurated by Christ, we have entered into an amiable agreement with Almighty God. Our original exposure to God's covenant with Abram transpired some 25 years earlier than the text we are teaching in Genesis 12, where the text testifies, now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This covenant between God and Abram was created when Abram was 75 years old. That should encourage somebody listening to me today. Here it is. 
it's never too late. Poet George Eliot wrote, it's never too late to be what you might have been. It's never too late to start all over again because God specializes in geriatric grace. Somebody can shout right there. Abram was 75 when he discovered that God had both a special plan and a special blessing in store for him. Listen to me now. It doesn't matter when. It only matters that God has a blessing with your name on it. People will say you can't, but God says you can. People will say you won't, but God says you will. People will say you don't have what it takes, but God says I can supply all your needs. People will say you're too far behind to catch up, but God says remember the last shall be first and the first shall be last. God has a blessing with your name on it. God promised to bless Abram, and God never makes a promise that God does not keep. If God said it, that settles it, whether we believe it or not. God promised to bless Abram because God's covenant always involves blessing. Are you listening to me? A blessing is God's favor expressed to you and through you to others to bring God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hear me well. A blessing is never only what God does for you. A blessing is what God does for you so that you might share it with somebody else. So when God told Abram he was going to bless him, it wasn't merely a promise to bestow a benediction on Abram. God broadcast that benefit that would come to Abram for Abram and through Abram so that all the families of the earth will be blessed. The starter pistol to kick off this race would be the delivery of a successor because there is no success without a successor. Somebody write that down. And up to this point in the story, Abram had none. If what comes to you stays with you, you have failed. Somebody needs to grab that. Don't let your blessing stop with you. Be a channel, not a reservoir. Let every blessing that flows to you flow through you to somebody else. If you fast forward a few years and stream Abram on the screen of your imaginations, he's struggling with doubts about the promises God had made to him. He questions God out loud in chapter 15. Abram says, O oh Lord God, what will you give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? See, Abram assumed that since God had not given him a biological child with his wife, then his heir, his successor, his beneficiary would end up being somebody born near him, but not necessarily born from him. For God had promised to make him a nation, but up to this point, he had no child. So Abram did what so many of us do today. He labored to fit God into his logic. Did you get that? He proposed an if then clause for God. He tried to reason his way to, into the promise. If it's not that, then it must be this. But we've been suggesting to you repeatedly throughout this series that God is larger than logic. God is not restricted by our rules, anchored by our arguments, nor detained by our definitions. Where is William Cooper when you need him? He wrote, God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. 
He plants his feet upon the sea and he rides upon the storm deep in unsearchable minds of never ending skills. God treasures up his bright designs and works his wondrous will. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take for the clouds you so much dread are big with mercy and soon will break with blessing on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense but trust him for his grace because behind a frowning providence he hides a smiling face. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan God's works in vain, for God is his own interpreter and he will make it plain. God is greater than our grasp and larger than our logic. God responded quickly and succinctly to Abram, assuring him that his heir would indeed come from his body and not just from someone in his own. However, this new information, rather than reinforcing Abram's faith in the all-powerful God, sent him and Sarai looking for another solution. Abram's heir was to come from his own body, but he and Sarai had obviously not been able to conceive a child together. So that must mean, according to his limited logic, that Abram was to have a child with somebody else. I'm in Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, now behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I will obtain children through her. And he went in to Hagar and she conceived. Hagar became a non-consenting participant in a drama she had not created, tired of waiting on God. Unable to produce progeny, Sarai produced a plan and drafted Hagar into her drama by offering her up as a sexual surrogate with whom Abram could connect and create the child they so both desperately desired. In the Lance Watson translation of this text, you can hear Sarai's voice on the wings of the century saying, Abram, why don't you go on and get your swerve on? I've seen you checking out that Egyptian honey, Hagar. Why don't you just go on and get with her and when she gets pregnant we'll take that child as our child since we can't produce one on our own. See in their minds God was obviously moving way too slow. Both Abram and Sarai had become old and undoubtedly weary. How much longer is this going to take? I just gave voice to somebody's question watching me today because when we don't like where things are or how things have developed or what people have said or how the situation has unfolded, our question usually for life and for God is how much longer is this going to take? Who knows what I'm talking about? Just drop your hand in the chat space. Abram and Sarai decide to help God out. And if you're familiar with the rest of the story, you know how devastating a decision that was, not only for people at that time, but also for all the nations that followed. Ishmael, the father of the Arab people, was born, and the Arabs and the Israelites have been in conflict ever since. Preach, preacher, I'm doing the best I can. Abram calls God El Shaddai 25 years after the promise was given. They had tried their own methods in an attempt to help God out, but nothing positive had come of it. In fact, the exact opposite occurred. So now they sat 
waiting without a biological heir, most likely assuming God had abandoned his promise. And some of us can probably identify with what Abram and Sarai were feeling. You may feel right now that God has simply taken too long to meet your need or fulfill his promise. Maybe you feel God has taken too long to help you find a mate, too long to fix your marriage, too long to change your child, too long to solidify your career, too long to bless your business, too long to give you some other breakthrough. Somebody ought to say and type right where you are in the face of that impatience, God did not forget. Come on, type it. Just type it for somebody's encouragement. Say, God did not forget because here's the truth, real talk. All of us have felt somewhat like that at some point in our lives. I ought to have 403 amens. I'll make 404. And yet I contend it's precisely in those moments that God reminds us of just who God is. At Abram's moment of deepest doubt, despair and depression. Abram comes to know God as El Shaddai, God Almighty, more than enough, perfect in all his ways, the one who is all sufficient. The prophet Isaiah would later draw on that imagery. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 15, whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make you an everlasting pride, a joy from generation to generation. You will also suck the milk of nations and suck the breast. That's the word shad there, which forms Shaddai, suck the breast of kings. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your savior and redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Isaiah 66, 10, be joyful with Jerusalem and rejoice with her, all you who love her. Be exceedingly glad with her, all you who have mourned over her. Chat that you may rejoice, that you may nurse and be satisfied with her comforting breast shed there, that you may suck and be delighted with her bountiful bosom. In both of those passages, the word shad is used to signify not just a supply, but a surplus supply of nourishment. When a woman nurses her baby, she supplies what that baby needs in order to live and grow and develop. And the name El Shaddai went coupled with its root meaning presents the image of God supplying the nourishment needed to sustain life, to build life, to keep life, to develop life. Abram and Sarah had no biological children together. They could not fulfill the covenant on their own. And perhaps that rings a note of familiarity to you. Have you ever felt, have you ever fully felt unable to produce what you believe God has promised you? Have you ever wondered how or even if God could work it out when you have so little to contribute to it? And yet I contend that it is precisely in those moments that God reminds us that God and God alone is the creator, the one who creates something out of nothing, and that God is El Shaddai, the one who can not only create but sustain life all by himself. God can work it out. You don't have to figure it out. Let God work it out. He did it for Abram. He did it for Sarah, and God will do it for you. God doesn't need earthly methods to facilitate an eternal plan. Abram and Sarai's motivation was probably good, but they went outside of God's plan to try to fulfill what God had promised. And in so doing, they actually got in the way of the promise's fulfillment. They delayed delivery of the promise. God would do what God said he would do, simply because God is faithful to his promises and faithful 
faithful to his covenant. God has the power, my friend, to bring into the visible physical realm that which exists only in the invisible, intangible realm. God doesn't even need raw materials with which to work because remember, God created the heavens and the earth ex nihilo. He created something out of nothing. The eternal certainly then didn't need Abram and Sarah to help him give them a child. After all, his name is El Shaddai. I'm dropping it. Both creator and sustainer of life. And God loves to manifest God's self in the context of the impossible. I'm helping somebody right here. Don't miss this. Have you any river that you think is uncrossable? Have you any mountain that you cannot tunnel through? Here's my grandmama. God specializes in things that seem impossible and he can do what no other power can do. Is there a witness listening? Genesis 17, 2, God says, I will establish my covenant between me and you. God says to Abram, without hesitation, and at this time, thankfully, when God responds to him, the text says, Abram fell on his face before God. Sometimes that's all you can do. When God provides a revelation about your situation, you can't explain it, you can't control it, you can't understand it, you can't figure it out, but you can believe it and praise God for it even in advance. Because watch what happens after hearing the name El Shaddai, Abram fell on his face before God Almighty who can create life and sustain life. And as a result, this is what happens when you track the text. God, he discovered God will give you a new name. Abram got a new name. Could I get 32 of you to say and type, God will give you a new name? I'm in verse 4. It says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. This is the Lord talking, and you will be a father of a multitude of nations. Not one child, but a multitude of nations. And then God says, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. Before the name change, God reminded Abram that his covenant with him was bigger than him. God told Abram not only that he would be the father of an heir, but that he would now be the father of many nations. Now keep in mind that Abram is pressing a hundred years old and Sarah was leaning in to 90 and yet with this new revelation God gives him a new designation Abraham which literally means exalted father God changed his name to fit his promise. I could preach a little while right there, but let me just say it again. God changed his name to fit his promise because in Abraham's culture, more so than in ours, names define people and names define destiny. God wanted Abraham to understand who he truly was, where he truly was, Who's he, who's he truly was and where he was about to go. He wanted him to be reminded every time someone spoke his name that God had made a covenant with him and that God would bring it about. Are you tired? Are you discouraged? Are you despondent? Are you depressed? Have you made mistakes? Have you messed up along the way? Are you caught up in the Ishmael syndrome trying to help God do what God promised to do only discover to discover that the more you try to help the worse you made things if I'm talking about you right there I want to encourage you to focus today on the name that I'm dropping and that name is El Shaddai you may have waited a long time. You may be weary in your waiting. You may have made mistakes along the way, but 
you still hear. Just as Abraham and Sarah were still there. And God can still supply. Yes, he can. When life is falling apart around us, it's God's power that confronts us. It's God's power that carries us. It's God's power that comforts us. That's El Shaddai. That's why Psalm 91 is one of my favorites. You ought to read it when you get a chance. In just two verses, we get a glimpse of four different names for God. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Should I, I will say of the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In essence, the songwriter is telling us it's all about where you hang out. It's all about who you hang out with. If you dwell where God Almighty dwells in the shelter of the Most High, God will be free to do his thing in your life. He will be your El Shaddai because God wants your presence more than your performance. God wants your relationship more than your religion. God wants your faith more than your forecast. God will give you a new name and God will give you a new walk. I'm in the text, verse one, God told Abraham, Abraham, walk before me. I want to tell somebody listening today, walk it out. Come on, type it in the chat space. You got to walk this thing out. It ain't enough to talk it. You got to walk it out. Because in the same way, God longs for us to dwell with God and walk before God and walk with God in God's presence at all times. In John 15, 5, Jesus put it this way. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Why? Because apart from me, you can do nothing. To abide with somebody is to hang with them. It's to hang out with them. It's the secret to an abundant life. Jesus says, if you hang with me, if you abide with me and my words hang with you and abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Y'all missed a shout right there. Just as a baby can't demand to be fed in a crib when it's all alone, but will receive the nourishment that they need only when abiding close to his or her parent, we receive all that we need as we abide close to God. We receive the manifestation of God's promises in us and for us when we hang with God, when we abide in God, when we are close to God, as we follow God and trust that God is able, we discover that God truly is. You know that when people get inebriated, when people get intoxicated, break it down, when people get drunk and then they head out to their car, someone will often say, hold up, hey, hand me the keys because friends don't let friends or family drive drunk. Say amen. And we take the keys because that person in that moment is under the influence of a substance that makes them unable to drive. Come here real quick because a lot of Christ followers, a lot of Christians today are living a life by their own decisions, will, and choices and that causes a lot of damage, waiting, and detours. They are not able to function under their own influence and God is saying, hey, hold up a minute, hand me the keys. I know how to take you where you need to go. I know how to take you how you need to go. I know how to get you to where you're trying to go. I know how to do it if you just hand over control of your life to me. Don't make God your co-pilot. Get out of the driver's seat and let God do the driving. God says, hand me the keys. I hear every prayer. I answer every groan. I calm every calamity. I can move any mountain. I can heal any illness. I can resolve any dilemma. I can manage 
any enemy, El Shaddai is powerful enough to supply all your needs regardless of what you know, regardless of what you understand, regardless of what you comprehend, regardless of what you can see. I know, my friend, at times it seems as if God has abandoned you. I know you made mistakes along the way, but the beautiful thing is that even though God told Abram at the age of 75 that he would make him a great nation and even though Abram stumbled along the path God still came back when Abram turned 99 and said I am El Shaddai I am God Almighty I've got this are you ready to trust me this time around and that's God's word for you today can you trust me this time around because get this get this here's the shout within a year Abraham and Sarah had a son. You missed it. We got to go. But let me assure you, not only will God give you a new name and a new walk, but God will give you new capacity. Everybody everywhere, say out loud, capacity. Now, could I get 12 of you to type it? Just that one word, capacity. Don't impose your limits on the Lord. God can do what no one else can. It reminds me of this story I heard that one day a man went fishing with his friend and before long he caught a fairly large fish. He quickly took it off the hook and threw it back in the water. A few minutes later he caught an even larger fish. Again he unhooked it and threw it back in the water. His friend assumed that he was fishing for sport and not for food but then the man caught a smaller fish and kept it, dropped it in his cooler. I don't understand, his friend said. Why are you throwing the big ones back but keeping the little small one? His friend said, my frying pan is only 10 inches wide. Ladies and gentlemen, if all you're looking at is the size of what you can do, the size of what you can catch, the size of what you can see, the size of what you can produce, what you have the capacity presently to bring about, then you're going to spend your whole life throwing back stuff that God wants you to have so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. You will settle for small when God wants you to have seismic. You will settle for mundane when you were created for the miraculous. Stop gauging God by the size of your pan and start looking at the size of God's purpose and God's power. Things happen that we don't understand. Things happen that we cannot explain. But El Shaddai is still more than enough. I've shared with you on another occasion, but it seems fitting here that there was a little bird trying to fly south for the winter, but the air became cold and frigid, so much so that its wings began to freeze, and it could not make it to the warmer climate. After some time, the little bird finally collapsed with that ice on its wings in a large field where there was a herd of cows grazing. Eventually, wouldn't you know it, a cow came came by and dropped a huge load of manure right on top of that freezing little bird. How humiliating that was. At first, the bird was upset, but then it began to feel how warm and comforting the manure was. Before long, that little bird's wings began to thaw out, and that little bird became so excited that it started singing and started tweeting. And just about that time, the farmer's old tomcat just happened to be passing by and heard that bird tweeting and singing, and he promptly followed that sound to the pile of manure and started digging until he discovered the little bird and ate it. Come here real quick. What's your point, Pastor? There are a whole lot of lessons there. First, you need to know not everybody who drops a load of manure on you is your enemy. Did you get it? Secondly, not everybody who takes manure off you is your friend. And then finally, if you find yourself deep in the manure, 
keep your mouth shut. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if you live long enough, every one of us will find ourselves in situations that seem like they are more than we can bear. Like that little bird, we'll feel as though we're in a pile of manure, trapped and waiting. But if you set your expectation on El Shaddai and his providential nourishing and sustaining care, God will give you the capacity to possess peace amid pain and assurance amid anxiety. Can I show it to you? I love the illustration that appears in Daniel chapter 3, verse 20. Nebuchadnezzar commanded certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in order to cast them into a blazing, fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in a bad situation. However, these three young men put their faith in El Shaddai and gained the tremendous victory because the Bible says then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and stood up in haste and said to his high officials, did we not cast in three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they replied, certainly, O king. He said, but look, I see four men loosed and walking around in the midst of the fire without harm. And the appearance of that fourth man looks like a son of the gods. God honored their faith by delivering them from the effects of the furnace, even while they were in the furnace. And God will, I said God will, do the same thing for you. God may not automatically or immediately change all of life's negative realities. You may still face and endure hardship. You may still battle prejudice and wrestle with racism. You may still feel threatened and unsure, but you can rest in the sustaining care and hope that God will fulfill God's promises. Don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. God is aware of your plight and God is working on your behalf for good, regardless of how dark the situation is and how long you have waited. Keep your faith in God because ultimately God will take care of you. If you are stranded on what seems to be a dead end road, look to God to be with you as you wait for your breakthrough. The Lord is El Shaddai, God Almighty who sustains you. The Lord is God Almighty who gives you hope amid hopelessness. All you've got to do is just believe. Isaiah 49, 23 says those who hope in God will not be disappointed. Somebody's got to claim that right now and just type it. I will not be disappointed. Romans 4.18 says against all hope, Abraham in hope believed because he planted the seed of belief. He ultimately saw the harvest of manifestation. God gave Abraham new capacity and God will do the same thing for you. New capacity like Booker T. Washington who with less than a chance went to Tuskegee, Alabama and transformed a wilderness into an institution of higher learning that still exists. New capacity like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who took the dead end streets of racial prejudice and turned them into an old open highway of freedom and hope, new capacity, like Harriet Tubman who took slavery and made an underground railroad out of it, new capacity, like Rosa Parks who sat down on a segregated bus so that the whole world could stand up in freedom, equality, dignity, justice, and love, new capacity, like Mother Mary who took the shame of bearing a child that the world despised and raised him to become the world's redeemer. New capacity like Jesus Christ who took an old rugged cross and used it to split time, leave BC on one side and 80 on the other side, took death 
and changed it to light. Took midnight and made morning. Took the grave and made it a servant of his purpose. God will give you new capacity. He'll make you a creator and not a caretaker. A voice and not an echo. A headlight and not a tail light. You'll take sickness and heal it. Take disease and overcome it. Take burdens and lift them. Take insults and get inspiration. Take wrong and right it. Take injustice and change it. Take hell and overcome it. Take sorrow and turn it to joy. Take hatred and keep on loving. Take injury and find incentive. Take darkness and turn it to day. Take hardship and find a hallelujah. Take weakness and turn it to strength. Sorrow won't demolish you. Sickness won't defeat you. Death won't destroy you. The grave won't be able to hold your people. Won't be able to discourage you. Else should die is by your side and El Shaddai is more than enough if you've got a burden you can't bear if you've got a problem you can't solve if you've got trouble that you can't tame if you've got a mountain you can't move call on El Shaddai he's more than enough and I am a witness that he will take you through yes he will I know he will how do you know, preacher? Because through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. How did you make it? It was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. I am a witness that if you trust and never doubt, God will. I said, God will. God will bring you out. Uh, won't he do it? El Shaddai is his name. Hallelujah and amen. I'm a name dropper, my friend, and the name I drop today on the desktop of your consideration is El Shaddai, God Almighty, more than enough, totally and completely sufficient. No matter what you face in your life today, I want to tell you, God is more than enough. But it requires you to do, me to do, us to do as Abraham did. You've got to believe God even in the face of the unbelievable. You've got to hope, even in the face of hopelessness. And this text and my life is a witness that if you trust and never doubt, God will bring you out. That's my invitation to you, wherever you are in the world today. I want you to put your trust in almighty God. I want you to put your trust in El Shaddai. Trust him with what? Trust him with your life. Admit that you need him. Believe he sent Christ into the world for you and raised him from the dead on the third day. Confess it with your mouth and do it right now. You have heard me say, and I say again, I'd love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church. Wherever you are in the world, use the information printed on the lower third of this screen. Text the word JOIN, J-O-I-N, using any digital device to 804-643-4769. We'd love to have you as a part of our family. We're reaching out to you now in the name of God Almighty, who is more than sufficient. Do you believe? Will you respond? We're praying you will and do it now.
Father, I will serve you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's take it back to the top right here and say it. God has smiled on me. God has set me free. God has smiled on me. God has been good to me. Has God been good to you? Yes, I know God has. God woke you up today, started you on your way, kept you sane, kept you safe, put food on your table. You know God is able. It's in that spirit that we prepare now to worship God through the giving of our tithe and our offering, our gifts of love. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Will men and women pour into your bosom for with the same measure you give it out, it shall be given to you again. That's Luke 6, 38, the words of Jesus himself. I invite you now as we prepare to give 
to prepare your best gift to respond to the goodness of God, not out of coercion, not out of obligation, not out of manipulation, but out of gratitude for what God has already done, out of a spirit of thanksgiving. And it's easy to give at St. Paul's. All the ways to give are listed on the lower third of this screen. You can go to our website, myspbc.org, and right there on the right-hand side of the screen is a big give button. Click on it and follow the instructions. You can give using your digital device, using the information that's on the screen right now in the lower third of this screen. Or you can write a check, drop it in the mail to the address listed right here on the screen. However you give and whatever you give, we hope that you will give generously, that you'll give happily, that you'll give thankfully, grateful for what God has already done to you. Your gifts make our ministry possible. We could not do what we do without you. So we're depending on you and relying on you through the grace of God to respond generously to our appeal. Can I pray with you and pray for you as we get ready together to give generously to the kingdom of God? Let us pray. God, we acknowledge that you are almighty and that you are more than enough. You are El Shaddai. You are completely sufficient. We declare that you are our number one priority. Today, we bring our tithe and our offering as a symbol, as a sign of our thanksgiving. We refuse to treat banks and bills and budgets better than we treat you. So we give today with the same expectation that a farmer has when they plant seed in the ground. We give with the expectation of a harvest. Bless us now that we might be a blessing to somebody else. And we thank you in advance for what you are about to do. Bless the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our provider. We shout hallelujah and amen. Let's give our best gift generously, thankfully, happily, joyfully right now. John talked about oh, yeah. in the book of the seven seals. Oh, yeah. Some call him Rose of Sharon. Oh, yeah. Others call him the Prince of Peace. Oh, yeah. I, I call Jesus my rock. He's sick of your shady song. Oh, yeah. A wheel in the middle of the wheel. Oh, yeah. John talked about it oh, yeah. in the book of the seven seals. Oh, yeah. Some call him Rose of Sharon. Oh, yeah. Others call Prince of Peace. Oh, yeah. I, I call Jesus my rock. Do they call him Jesus my rock? Call him Jesus my rock. In the lily of the valley, my rock. Oh, Jesus my rock. I, I know he won't deny me. Always walk beside me. I call, I call Jesus my rock. Hey, he's sick of your said he's talk.
What a day this has been to worship on this last Sunday in August, 2022. It's been our joy to be able to share this worship celebration with you. Would you take a moment and share it with somebody else? Every Sunday, we're trying to share the stream with at least a thousand people and your one share makes all the difference. Click that share arrow and share this stream. If it's been a blessing to you today, then take a second moment and click the link in the chat space and download the message application guide so that you and your family, your friends, your coworkers might have the opportunity to discuss this message long after the stream has concluded. It's been a joy to share with you today. We invite you to stay tuned to watch The Scoop so you can be aware of all the events and activities happening as a part of the St. Paul's Baptist Church. We love to include you in them. But right now, let's share our benediction, our final and parting blessing together. It'll be printed on the screen. So let's read it all together, knowing that you are blessed. All together, I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently, live authentically, love genuinely, and put all your trust in God Almighty. El Shaddai is his name. He's more than enough. God bless you. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, 
here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul's South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number 1 when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Name dropping is the practice of casually mentioning the names of famous people you know or claim to know in order to impress others or raise your own status through association. As people of faith, we should be name droppers, dropping the name not of celebrities, but of our creator. God elevates our status and God has an impressive resume. Isn't it time for you to drop a name? Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, for this exciting series as he encourages us to become name droppers. If you're anywhere near Richmond, September 10th and 11th, we want to invite you to join us in person for our annual homecoming celebration. We are family. On Saturday, September 10th, all roads lead to our South Campus at 700 Belt Boulevard, where we'll worship together at 11 a.m. and then share in fun, food and fellowship and festivities immediately after in our homecoming Rock the Block party. Then on Sunday, September 11th, we're all meeting at our North Campus, 4247 Creighton Road, where we'll worship together at 9 a.m. and then share in fun, food, fellowship, and festivities immediately after in our homecoming Sunday Fun Day celebration. Visit our website, myspbc.org, for all the details. Don't miss it. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.